Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. And uh, a lot of things to go over, so I think we should just jump right in. First of all, we're going to take a look at my portfolio, just to give it a little health update to see where we are, where we have been, and where we are going. We're also going to take a look at some interesting indicators. If we take a look at the Fed funds rate, overlaying that with the M2 money supply, the total market cap in Bitcoin, to see if it's a reliable indicator. And also, we'll talk a little AI towards the end. But before we get into my somewhat lagging portfolio, we'll talk to an individual who can help us make sense of the whole market. And that would be my man, Chad. Let's go. Kate, Kate Bergman, <laughs> Chad. I, I saw, I was like, is that Chad? That's Cad. <laughs> Kate Bergman, my man, we met at Nashville. And uh, I got to tell you, it was, it was great. It was great to meet you in person. I like what you're doing over on your channel. I like how you're promoting near blockchain, crypto. And you know what really got me into it was uh, when you first did that, that sweat coin video. I was like, wow, that's mm -hmm. like way better than the one I did. So how's it going, buddy? <laughs> it's going great. Thanks for having me on the show, man. I've been watching your uh, your channel, Benjamin Cohen's channel. You guys are some of the OGs I used to watch during the prior run. So it's great to be on the show. It's cool to cool to meet. Nashville was a great, great time. Um, yeah. So yeah, man, excited to jump into it. Let's get into it. So if you guys don't know, so Cade does a really cool thing. He takes all the information from near, especially like their recent newsletter. And he synthesizes that and gives you like updates about what's going on with near and near protocol. And before we get into a little backstory, let's talk about why are you so into near? Cause like I have my reason, but why are you, why are you so into this crypto project? Yeah, so I basically came from the the originally when I when I came in, I'm 26 years old. Just for some context, like when I was like 21, 22, I think is when I was like, okay, I'm working this normal job. I got to get into finance or something. Uh, otherwise, like I'm gonna work a job forever, and I need to figure out another way. And so I kind of dove deep into the finance world, and eventually found myself into the crypto lands. There was obviously yeah. the bull run that was kicking off around that time, and so I kind of got obsessed with the crypto land. So I, I drove, I, I dove into NFTs and crypto. Like went the degen route at first. I've kind of found my way over towards uh, getting a bit orange pilled, uh, for sure. Um, the thanks to Benjamin Cohen and all of <laughs> his Bitcoin content. Um, but I was like, okay, from a content perspective, though, I love making videos, and I had gotten burned by a lot of the NFTs. And I was like, okay, oh. I've always wanted to work in crypto land, but I am a content creator. That was ultimately that's what I like to do. So, what angle can I come? What what can I actually offer? And who's building some cool stuff? Is there anything I potentially could be early on? And I saw my friend Easy Bodega and Soul Jakey. They were big on Solana. I'm just not that big of a DGen. And I was like, I just don't fit in that crowd. And I tried out Multiverse X, you know, formerly Elrond. I tried yep. uh, Cardano. I tried a few other chains. And I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't exactly fit. And then I found I had a few friends in your protocol. And I was like, okay, what is this thing? And they were like, oh, like I work with this project and that project. So I dove in and I really liked Ilya the founder of Nier. I liked right. that they were one of the most, if not the highest, um, post ICO funded project in the game. Right. And I was like, okay, there's something here. Otherwise they wouldn't dump a bunch of money in here, uh, post ICO. And I'll say, okay, cool. So I kind of dove in and I was like, okay, they used to be an AI project. They used to be near AI. Um, you know, that's where, uh, AI is near is kind of their, their original coin term. And they're just big on that, on that. And I'll say, like, okay, they're the top AI coin. They haven't taken off in that way yet. Their ecosystems still growing essentially and yeah. it felt very much like when i saw easy posting solana at eight dollars and i was like dude what are you literally doing i was like this probably this, this coin sucks like what are you talking about like it, it does this and i didn't see the vision and then now he's like posting screenshots of his buys at eight dollars and we're all crying in our portfolios because he's like winning the most and I, it was, basically it was that conviction i was chasing and i really liked that near feels like underrated still to me and even right. just from like a strictly monetary aspect, you're looking at it just to get back to the all-time highs. You're like, okay, well, at the very least, it'll just get back to those prices uh, is, is the hope. You know, you never really know. Um, but that was kind of the bet I made. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I'm going to start making content, see if I can get the attention of people that I did in 2021 and two um, in the NFT market and see if I can do the same thing within an ecosystem on near. And I basically just identified a few companies I wanted to work with. And I just started going hard on high quality content. And, uh, but I really like near AI's sharding. I love their sharding their blockchain. I feel like it's, they're made for efficiency and that's what they drive towards and they're big on innovation and it's, it's okay that they're, you know, maybe more boring than a near, than a Solana, um, for now is kind of how I've thought about it. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I got to tell you, like, uh, for you to said it, it resonates because like with me, I, my big thing for, for near was I didn't believe in it at all. And then when I it was introduced to Oleg and Sweatcoin, and he said, Hey, we're going to take our near 120 million uh, users from web two, and we're going to put them over to web three. 
And I said, okay, well, good luck. What, what chain are you going to use? You're going to use Ethereum? You're going to use Solana? He's like, we're going to use Near. I'm like, I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> and then, and, and then he, he told me, and he said, they're going to do it. I'm like, okay, you're telling me that they can handle all those transactions in one day? Good luck. And guess what? They did it. And there was no problems. There was no lags. There was no shutdowns. There was no problems with the validators going, hey, you guys got to rejump everything. And it did it. And from that point on, I go, this one can scale if mm -hmm. they can execute. And that's why I started to really get into mm -hmm. Near. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I mean, they've got some pretty cool. They just like in the last week or two, I've had two massive upgrades. One of them called chain signatures, which is actually kind of low key huge for the entire crypto industry. I feel like it wasn't that it wasn't talked about that much because it's more of a boring upgrade. But essentially, it allows you to sign transactions for any chain from a near account. Um, and kind of their whole idea is champ extraction, account aggregation, basically bringing everything into one account um, that is very much like a Coinbase or a Binance, but it's decentralized, non-custodial. I really like that. That's always the direction they're headed. And um, they just brought together uh, something called Nightshade 2.0, a big upgrade to their blockchain. I think it might be the biggest since their original mainnet launch. Uh, right. Essentially, essentially just you know, quintupling the efficiency of the chain. I just like that they're moving that direction. And they've, and I think the reason is they, they know they're okay as far as funding. They've got some time and they're willing to put in that work. So that's the, the main reason. Um, and just full disclosure, I, I work, uh, I do video content with Near Foundation. Uh, so people can take my word and be like, you know, throw it out the window if they want. Um, but I was kind of bullish on them before I started working with them. That was a little while after. Um, I do video content with Near Foundation and um, they don't have any like, hold on my content they're not, they're not gonna call me and be like i can't believe you said that bro like how dare you post that about near <laughs> like they don't thought they're not like that at all uh and then i do uh spaces over at wolf financials so that's kind of like my background currently yeah they're not gala games come on so anyhow <laughs> so on on top of that how kate how long have you, have you been in the market so in 2020 there was a point in, in 2020 where i didn't know what a stock was and then there's a point in 2020 where I was all in 100% full crypto degen and I knew every single aspect of the financial market from the most uh, basic, basic level. So yeah. it basically, it took me like a year and a half to sort of learn everything. And I'm a, I'm a chaotic person in that sense where I will not stop until I feel like I've satisfied my urge to understand everything. Um, obviously, you can only understand so much. Experience plays a massive part in it. Uh, but basically, since 2020 is when I started getting in. I got into Dogecoin in 2019 by accident on Robin Hood. And then I forgot about the app for a couple of years. And then 2021 bull market kicked off, got to cash out, lost all my money immediately after because I didn't know what I was doing. So I paid my dues a couple of different times. Um, but yeah, around 2020 is when I started getting in. Gotcha. And this is one thing that, that we shared. Like when I was a, so growing up, when, when I was a kid, we were homeless for, for some time. And it wasn't, it was no fault of my mom. She just wasn't a financial guru. Let's just say that. And then of course you, when I saw this, you know, three, four years ago, you were also living in your car, yep. living hand to, hand to mouth for quite some time. So t take us to that journey of going from homeless to having your own YouTube channel and uh, doing work with a massive foundation like Near. Yeah. So basically in around that time, around 2019, 2020 is when I was realizing that I need to figure something out for content and stuff like that. Or not yeah. content uh, for uh, for career and and money and personal finance. I need to take a little bit more um, control over it. It's when I started to understand the entrepreneurship journey. I was watching yeah. a lot of people that I thought were good influences who who are a few years older than me who had things that uh, I was pursuing, and I'll like, say, okay, cool. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go this direction. Um, I made a little bit of money with that Dogecoin, like I said, and I was like, okay, well. I feel called to do this van life situation, but I don't, I don't, I can't afford a van. So I'm just going to turn my car, rip it up and uh, make it into a home. And so that, that car that I'm in right there is like my, my literal home. And I still had some money from the Dogecoin. So that was going to be originally what funded me. Um, and then, like I said, I, at that point I was like, dude, screw it. I'm 22 years old. I'm just going to go all in on everything. So I put all my money into the market, put it into Ethereum, into Cardano, into uh, a couple of small cap coins on Cardano as well, like Cauti, nice. I think, and yeah. a few of those. Uh, proceeded to lose just about 100% of that when the market crashed overnight in May, I think it was, 2021. Sounds like a lot of people in the uh, comment section also yeah. have done the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember it vividly. I was literally in a Walmart parking lot because I was living in the car and I was like, man, this is kind of rough. I thought living in a car would be more fun. It's not, it's way harder than I thought. This isn't that cool. Um, but you know, I'll try for a couple of months and then I'll, I'll go back to life kind of thing. But then I lost everything and I was like, oh crap. Now I can't afford anything. I'm on the other side of the country. I don't know anyone within a thousand miles. What am I supposed to do now? And you know, I, I feel like I dug myself in this hole. 
So I fall into this whole entire depression, you know, riddled with anxiety and, and I'm not sure what to do. So I continue trucking on because I have no, no other option. Um, and now I'm stuck in this car. I have literally no option. And I remember a couple of times uh, sleeping in the Walmart parking lot in the car going, OK, so I can't even go inside. So I'm just going to have to pee outside because if I go inside, I might buy something and I have literally no money. And that sucked. That was so painful. But I also remember I, I would at some point get out of it. I, it felt like it was going to be a temporary situation I need to go through at that point. And, um, you know, maybe it was my endless pursuit of what I found to be God a few years later. Uh, or I'm not sure what it was that kept me going. But I kind of just was in that mode for a while. Just survival mode, survival mode. Just make it to next week, make it to next week. Eventually, I was on my last like literally 20, 30 bucks. And yeah. I had enough money to fill up another tank of gas. I was visiting a friend in Minnesota. I can't really explain my my decision making around this time. It was just things would happen. And then right before I ran out of money, I would get like another $50. And I would survive for another couple of days. It was kind of like that style for a very long time. And one day he was like, dude, just DoorDash. You have a Prius. He's like, he's like, that's literally your last V that's your last mode of, of anything worth anything. This like $1,000 crappy 2002 Prius, just, just either sell the car. And I don't know what you do from there, but cause you can't really sell the car cause that's all you have, but maybe you should start door dashing. And I was like, ah, I can't do that. And he was like, no, you can actually, you can do it right now and make hundred dollars. And that's yeah. what I did. And so that yeah. kept me going for another few months. And, uh, and then just the craziest turn of events, I was just obsessed with NFTs during this point. And so every time I would make a little bit of money, I was like, dude, this is my way out. So every ounce of money I made from DoorDashing would either go to gas, uh, or I would try and just like figure out my way around NFT, NFT world, which I continued to lose all my money. And it was so brutal. It was so, so brutal. And eventually that led to me making some videos on near or not on near on NFTs and do podcasts and educational content and stuff like that. So. Excellent. So the reason why I brought this up is as we get into this is that remember everybody, it's not where you start, it's where you end up. So it doesn't matter what's happening in your life. I know we've all got our little battles to, to go through. Some have bigger battles than others, but just remember everything just takes time. And because of that, I think everybody here is in the right place at the right time. And whatever your portfolio is, I think you're going to do reasonably well. So <laughs> Aid, let's jump into this piece. Let's just talk about portfolio. So first of all, like here's mine and that's, uh, it's all over the place. And I've got a lot of, cause I've been in since 2017. So I've got a lot of different bags. We shall say that need to be unloaded. And as a reminder, everybody, I will dump on you. I will dump on every single one of you that is in this comment section, unless you take profits. So remember, all these steps that we talk about, where it's not financial advice, it's just a little insight into where me and Kate are doing things, but uh, I will dump on you. So please, please, please make sure you take profit. <laughs> so for, for this one, like I'm still roughly Bitcoin 70% plus of my portfolio and it's worked out pretty well. Okay, when I got in, it was the same thing. I was like, okay, let me get into a little Bitcoin, but then let me get into like the more risky stuff. And mm. as time went on, I figured out like, okay, there's times to reallocate and that's, you know, as time has gone on, it's been, been better to reallocate into Bitcoin a little bit, but still play the game because these things could do quite well. And I've got mm -hmm. over 70 different uh, altcoins. So Ethereum, Solana, Near, <laughs> Cardano, Toncoin, Avalanche, Link, Stacks, Arbitrum, Mutable, Injectable, Cosmopolitan, and 67 other ones. Cade, what do you got right here? And what, I'm, what we're going to do, everybody, is we're going to take a look at how we're doing as far as dollar cost averaging from this year, from two years ago, and from four years ago. So Cade, real quick, what do you got for your portfolio? So right now I am, I've been out of the market for all coins that includes near protocol, by the way, I'm also like you, uh, I have conviction plays, but I also have entry points that I want to get into. So nice. just because I believe in a coin, I'm not going to just get in uh, at, at a Pico top or I try not to, that's kind of the goal that I, that I figured I would, I would, I would take some of these lessons in the last couple of markets. I'll try and apply them if I can is the goal. So entry points, exit points are important. Um, you know, people have this idea of crypto. And then there's trading over here. And the trading is separate from just crypto. You can trade. There's, a, there's an art form to the trading and the reading of the markets, which I didn't really know until I spent about a year in the bear market um, following some of the better, better traders, especially day traders and swing traders. And I really got to understand um, some of the charts, not to a super high technical um, level, but uh, I think way more than the average person. Um, so that helps me. I'm not, I'm not day trading in and out of things, um, but I, yeah. I do just understand from, like, from a basic uh, fundamental standpoint. And so I'm pretty much... Uh, of my entire net worth, uh, it's probably closer to like uh, 20% into the crypto world. And of that 20% into crypto, 99% of it is Bitcoin right now, just currently at this point. Um, and then I have a little bit of Nier and Solana, but those are the only two altcoins that I hold currently. Uh, and I just have those just 
because you know I, I don't know that not enough to be like okay this is my bag um yeah. just because i see a better entry point i would love to i'm of the idea that we see a, a low a pretty, a pretty a pretty fat low before we we trend into valhalla hopefully uh -huh. That's kind of when I want to load up on altcoins. Uh, I've, because I'm in these wolf financial spaces, um, we have a lot of market talk spaces that you were a part of uh, a few times. And yeah. uh, they're a lot of fun, but there are a lot of opinions that come in and out through the months. And they change. You know, you'll be like, yeah, we're, we're bullish. We're bullish. We're bullish. And then the month comes. We don't get the closes we want. And now we're, everyone's bearish for a couple for a couple months. And uh, so it's very difficult sometimes for me to keep a, a level head about these things. And so I appreciate people who make educational, consistent content like you guys who have been in the market for a long time. And I trust your I trust your opinions and thoughts because you've ridden some of the waves. But I'm pretty much Bitcoin centric right now. I really like the idea that you can be crypto uh you can be exposed to crypto without being exposed to 90 to 100 drops on the regular. <laughs> so uh, that's currently where I'm at. I'm definitely, and I'm gonna enter the the altcoins at some point, and they'll probably be near um, Solana Avalanche. I, I think still is a, an okay entry right now. Actually, uh, I probably should have gotten her in when they were around the twenty dollars. And then Ton Coins, a good move, dude. I know, especially with what just happened recently. I feel like Ton Coins a move, but we'll see, dude. It's crypto. Yeah, we'll see. So well said. Well said. And everybody, do you understand now why I have Cade on the show? So you can, you might have taken a look at Cade, like, okay, near guy, probably a lot of altcoin guys, talk about NFTs in the beginning, but what did he tell you? He'd say, like, look, I'm in convection plays, Bitcoin, a little bit of near, a little bit of Solana. So there is a link in the description where you guys can follow Cade and you can follow Wolf Financial and get some great alpha and information about what's going on. So that was the portfolio part. Thank you, Cade, for telling us how it is. It's very interesting. Let's take a look at this. So first of all, uh, as a reminder, I don't see September being anything great. Uh, today is September 1st. And historically, if you look at just September over all the years, it doesn't matter if it's uh, big blow off tops, like in 2021, when we had that nice blow off top in November, uh, we were down 7% in September. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, 2017, you were down 8%. Now, for some reason, last, last, last year, we were at 4%. This month, so far, we're down negative 1%. So if you take a look at September, it is the worst performing month, historically speaking. And that's not just for crypto. If you take a look at the S&P 500 NASDAQ, it is the same thing across the board. There's a reason why they talk about sell in May and go away. It's because people start to come back in October. Having said that, let's take a look at dollar cost averaging. So this, of course, is uh, information from Ben's website, which you all know I steal from regularly. <laughs> and uh, it's great info. Links in the description. First month off. First month 10% off. But what I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention, we're going to take a look at how the portfolio itself is doing since the beginning of 2024. We're going to take a look at how it could have done or is doing since 2022. And if we would have gone back even further 2019, which is kind of where I've been at, how we're doing and just how this all stacks up. So we're taking a look at a Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Dogecoin, Toncoin, ADA, Cardano, Avalanche, Near, and ICP, because why not? So what I'm doing for this one, and you can run this through the, on this on Ben's website, it's 100%. I mean, this part's free right here. So we're taking $100 weekly on a Monday, starting on the beginning of this month. And dollar cost average we talk about, is it the greatest thing? Eh, would have been better if we had a lump sum, but hey, here's <laughs> where we're at. So $100 a week, you see that we're actually doing pretty good for most of the year, except for January. And then all of a sudden we got this magical thing called the Bitcoin ETF that got approved and everybody's happy, really happy. March, we're super happy. If you're in Dogecoin, you're almost 100% yeah. up. Bitcoin, you're only up 48%. Near coin, you're up 90. But let's keep going. And then, of course, in May, not too bad. There's a little bit of uh, turmoil. And then now, as of today, well, when was it August 26th for some reason, you're down on most of them if you would have done the same thing. You're down on Near, Doge, Ethereum, Link, Avalanche, 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 ADA, ICP. But you're up a ton of Solana, so good job. So that's just taking a look at that. Kate, what do you think about, about this piece right here? Yeah, I was I was checking some of the charts earlier, and yeah, basically we had we had that pico top in March, and uh, there was I remember in the spaces there was so much speculation like this is this is the chance, this is the time where we don't see that correction, this is the time where we 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 never revisit these lows, 
And I was just like, dude, I feel like I've seen the story. I remember in the last cycle, we said the exact same thing. Like it didn't happen. Like, I don't know. There might be a time where that, where that rings true. And then, you know, the bulls will just be like, I told you, bro, I literally told you. And we're going to be like, <laughs> I yeah, <told> man. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, the dollar cost average, I, I believe for Bitcoin now, I, I finally understood Bitcoin to the level that I needed to. Cause my question a, a few months ago was like, why are some of the smartest people I know and some of the people with the the most amount of wealth that I know willing to dump so much of their net worth into Bitcoin. Right. Um, there must be something different about this asset in particular. And that's when I started to do the deep dive specifically on Bitcoin. We started doing spaces on Bitcoin and I, I finally started to get it. And I was like, oh, OK, this is this is the one that we can believe in. Everything else we got to speculate, even if you love it as much as I do. Um, right. Some of the specific altcoins, they are speculation plays. There is a chance they never come back. Bitcoin is just cut from a different cloth. Um, simply because it's proof of work. You can't just, you can't just, there's no, there's no ways around the proof of work method. You, you have to mine it. And, uh, there's, a, there, there's a capped amount and there's a certain amount off the market. That's very sexy to me. Just about I, everything else, you know, it's, it's a bit different. What's up? No, no, I was going to say, I agree. I mean, it's, it's just, it's just getting it away from it. And really what it comes yeah. down to is time because mm -hmm. so Kate, you've been around since 2021, 20, 2021, but some, some people, I mean, most people I would say, actually, I can't say most. Let's say a good amount of people in the comment section that are listening right now, maybe they have been around since 2021. So this is all they know. They, they, they know mm -hmm. like this, this massive bull run and then, hey, what yep. happened? And then, of course, you're going to hear the same type of, of comments like, hey, bro, we're, this is it. We're going to keep going up forever. There's going to be a super cycle and there's going to be mass adoption. And before you know it, this is it. So just dump everything right now. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait. I, me and Kate have heard this story before. And here we are. Yeah. So. It could yeah. get crazy though. It, it could. I'm kind of curious. Maybe I uh, would maybe love to get your thoughts actually on this. Uh, you know, we had the NFT catalyst, which which propped up the markets pretty much on their shoulders alone. That didn't last very long. It was a crazy time to be alive. I'm glad yeah. I went through it. I feel like um, nothing can rattle me as much as those uh, those dang assets did. Um, but I'm curious uh, from your side what you guys. Uh, I mean, you're in some circles that uh, that I believe in, and so you're surrounded by individuals who know the markets more than the average person too. Uh, I'm curious on what you think might be a big catalyst other than just markets have a, a turn to the to the bulls. Like, uh, is there any specific things that you see that will just send us to Valhalla? We're going to talk about uh, federal funds rate and M2 money supply. And we're also going to overlay that with the S&P 500 and, and total market cap. And there is, when we start to see rate cuts, which we're, we should see in September, if we take a look at the FOMC meeting timeframe, that is going to be the, that part of it. The M2 money supply is actually increasing. It all really comes down to liquidity. So those two things. But the big thing I personally think, and I've said this numerous times on my channel, which is we're not going to go anywhere until we get clarity from two sources. One is who's going to be the president of the United States. Once we get that, I don't care. Well, I do kind of care. I mean, who it actually is. The market's now going, okay, we got this person. We know which way it's going to go. We'll do this thing. Okay, we got this person. We know it's going to go. It's going to do that thing. And the second thing is regulatory clarity. And if Gary Gensler stays in office, that is not a positive catalyst. That is a hindrance massively. If he gets fired, then that is a massive catalyst, depending on who comes in. God knows who it'll be after that. Maybe you trust the devil you know, trust the devil you don't know. So those are the things that I actually see as a catalyst. Yeah, the, the presidential was probably a pretty big. I, I'm so curious just because. You know, unless I was to get fired, I'll be doing spaces through, during, after that whole period of time, end of year. And I'm very curious to see kind of what happens. Like, say Trump gets elected and you're like, OK, everyone's bullish. Is it going to be one of those situations where he gets elected? Everyone freaks out. We got about two weeks of euphoria and everything's back to normal. Will he keep yeah. Will he keep his promises even? Uh, hey, Daniel, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, uh, like, is, is it going to be one of those situations where it ends up being not as cool as we thought? But you're right. Four years with a president that's pro Bitcoin specifically, but also pro crypto just because he wants to keep the business in the United States. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool environment to be in four years with the president who's down to keep, who wants to keep the business in America. I feel like that's, that'll be unheard of basically that that'll be a cycle we we really haven't seen before. Um, mm -hmm. You're right. That could be a pretty big catalyst, um, man. Yeah. I, I think it is. And you know what? So this would lead me to, to, to the next chart we're going to take a look at, which is, I don't know what's going to happen. Cade doesn't know either. No one really knows. But really, if it just it's just time in the market. Sometimes it's better than timing the market. So mm -hmm. let's take a look real quick at 
a little bit farther back. So we just took a look at 2024 and we started a DCA, right? Not too great. You put in 3,300 bucks and you got 3,545. I don't know, maybe you could outdo yourself with a typical savings account in the bank. I'm just kidding, <laughs> you wouldn't. But if we go back, let's turn the time back. I know some people, or most people on my channel have done this. You guys have done really good at silencing the naysayers and buying in the bear market because that's where all the money's made. And it's very tough to do. And if you would have done that, well, let's see how you do. So again, $100 weekly in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Doge, Ton, blah, blah, blah. We all know that, right? So let's take a look here. November 7, 2022, that was the, I guess that'd be called the Pico bottom around November. I think it was like November 17th, but whatever. Mm. So we put in a hundred bucks in and you can see that actually for a while, you weren't doing so hot. You're actually in mm. the red, which is like, to me, it's, it feels like throwing sand in the ocean. You're like, why am I doing this? Oh, that's right. It's because as time goes on and I'm in the market longer, things start to really work out for me. Mm -hmm. The longer I'm in the game, the luckier I get. It's just a weird phenomenon how we do. And if we would have, if we would have gone from 2022 to like this high part here, look at this: Solana 678 percent, Near 322 percent, wow. AVAX 268, ICP 52 ton. You're in the you're you're massively in the green. And now, if you would have hold on, remember take profits. You probably should have done that, but it's okay if you didn't. <laughs> right here, you you did a two x. Just doing simple, goofy things, buying in the bear market. Kay, what do you got on this one? Dude, you're hundred percent right. I wish at that point in 2022, I was, I was prepared and had more cash. That was the biggest takeaway. It was like, dang, dude, like profits is better than, uh, like some profits is way better than time in the top. Because if I had even a little bit of cash to deploy during that time, you're looking at, at big gains over the next couple of years. And I think that's probably the one thing I'll be looking at this time around is that like, you know, if, if we were to, if we were to trend up the, the, yeah. the chart hits the top and then we start trending back down and that's just how the, the story goes. If that's what happens in this next cycle, um, you know, whether or not you sell all the way up, like here, 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 yeah. or yeah. you sell here, 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 as long as it's not down here, you're still going to be in the profits. And that's the one thing I learned is like, you can take some profits and be happy with that. And like the main thing I'm looking for is just stacking, stacking the, the bag of cash so that I can deploy it back in, into Bitcoin and some of these altcoins in those dead lows. Cause you're right. This pretty much is the way, I mean, you can day trade your way through the markets if you're really that guy, but I'm man, that. I'm not that guy either. And like it can happen. It's just, it's so stressful. You're constantly on the charts. So it depends what you kind of want for your life. If you have uh, if you have family that you want to, you know, sometimes it's, it's tough. You're like, look, look, I want to take you to the park but I'm kind of in a half million dollar trade and I can't, <laughs> so like, you know what I mean? So it, it depends what you're looking for. All I want to do is be able to afford really nice green screens. Uh, what, do, you, um, do you think, uh, like, what do you think could potentially be, or maybe there won't be, but do you think there will be a unicorn uh, uh, altcoin this season? A lot of people are saying Solana, but then dude, Ton, Ton came out of nowhere. And then for like two days, Tron was the, the unicorn all of a sudden and everyone forgot about it. And I was, I just could not believe when Solana toppled Ethereum as like that coin, it went from yeah. the poor person blockchain, the people who make $8 on a flip and celebrate about it to like everyone's biggest bag is Solana. I was like, wait, what just happened? And yeah. so because that was possible, I thought, hey, that's that's kind of when I was like, hey, maybe I can try my hand at Nier. Maybe Nier will have its moment in the sun and we'll see what happens. But do you think there'll be a unicorn in this cycle? This is, I will tell you right now, if there's a unicorn in the cycle, I will probably miss it. That's usually how <laughs> my portfolio works. So Damn. this is why I diversify a little bit and hopefully I catch something. It's not about selling the top. Like I've said before, if I hit 60% of the top, I'd be very, very happy, especially where I think the prices are going. So talking about that, let's go, let's, let's rewind even, even more so. And this is where I think, I think we'll hit home with a lot more people. If you're in 2021, or like Shaolin 2017, a couple other people have been like 2016, and some people are 2021, 2022. This is gonna be, as a quick reminder, we've talked about this many times. The longer you're here, the better you'll do. Let's go all the way back to 2019, September 1st, as of today. And we're doing the same things, Ethereum, Solana, Doge, Ton, blah, 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 right? And as we can see, it's the same thing, 100 bucks coming in and just kind of writing it out. I wanna, I wanna show two things, first of all, Let's go to the Pico Tapo of November 2021. If you would have bought into ton and ICP, you'd be down. And that's like the peak peak. But look at this. Solana, you're up 6,500%. Dogecoin, 5,002. 
ADA almost 2000%, ETH 1000% and so on and so forth. This is why I like to diversify. The problem is, is everybody thinks about, I don't wanna miss generational wealth. I need to hold on to these, which you can, but as we go down here, gains are still pretty good, but not near what you would have had. Yeah. If you just would have taken a little bit of profits over here, been fine. And then coming over here, you're still up. Now, let's be honest. Nobody's <laughs> nobody's really faulting you for having 2,000% up on Sol or Doge or ETH. Actually, you're up across the board. But the longer you're in, I think the better that you do. So when people take a look at my portfolio, like, Rob, why are you holding on to all this trash? 67, <laughs> 71s. I'm like, look, I know what it is. I have no delusions. This is just me holding on to some bags and offloading later. Kate, okay, what do you got on this one? Well, I was curious on that ICP. ICP looks pretty bad on that on that long term chart there at the very end. I was like down 40% or something like that across the it was like the only one in the red. I was like, wow, dude. Like I have a few friends who are big on ICP and I remember hearing about ICP. I feel like um, for a lot of the DJs who uh, grew up on TikTok. 2021 uh crypto crypto tiktok um xrp yeah. and, and icp are some of those bigger coins that a lot of the content creators talk about um yeah. I, I i fail to see exactly what the play is for icp i think they're one of those maybe that if you're in and you and you know kind of what they're building you might be bullish but from just from like a chart perspective i'm like bro do we miss it like is icp ever coming back is it kind of the same story with like a cardano i remember i, I saw some videos saying this is this is it like cardano's done out they're cooked after this cycle and i was like i don't know dude i feel like a lot of people still believe in this coin it might just be crypto twitter that's getting some of them to believe it uh, but some of these altcoins dude i'm i'm pretty curious to see how they're going to perform this cycle I, i'm not of the belief that we're going to have um as we'll have some, we'll have euphoria but i don't know if we're gonna have the the same euphoria as before just because the sheer amount of different altcoins are that are available but i do right. think I, I am of the belief that a lot of like the top 100 will do pretty well yeah i mean i'm i'm, I'm on the same level here top 100 will do very well just who really knows what Wait, who knows yeah. which one it is? And then just to just to give some some context with ICP, this is where it started. So of course it's going to be very difficult. But as we've talked about before in this channel, and there's been some other information on chain analytics, which takes a look at what SBF and FTX did to ICP to kind of sabotage that project because it kind of got away in the way with one of their projects that they were so heavily involved in. I'll let you figure that out. Uh, who are watching the, the video? But there's also there's this and there's also I don't know what the unlocks as far as the tokenomics. So if they had like, you know, 5% circulating supply in the very beginning and they just dumped 100% back on the market as far as the circulating, then that could be a big, dif big, huge difference. So ICP is I'm got to I got to be honest, with you, I'm surprised it's still in the top 30, not because of the technology. People will tell you the technology is great. That's awesome. Fantastic. But. When it comes to price action, it's not so great. And maybe it'll have its day in the sun. I just don't know. So yeah. Yeah. anybody's guess. Well, I was going to say also, not not so much on ICP, but just when I was looking at some of those charts, it got me thinking like, uh, I'm, I mean, we connected over this on, on X prior because of that post. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm very grateful that I've, I actually took a, I actually found a screenshot from a while ago. Um, let me see if I can find it actually. I think it was like literally two days ago that I found this, this screenshot. It was a photo that I took and this was as early as, as recent as 2022. Ooh. This is when the bear market hit. Um, I was still full time, but just enough to make it by. Like the, like basically, um, 2024 is when I started to finally begin the rise of accumulating wealth versus just surviving to the next month and figuring out a way. It was, I, was, I was basically just trudging along on the entrepreneurship journey, which is what Alex Ramosi says. He's like, look, you're going to commit to this journey in the first five to 10 years. You might not make a single cent. And then at the very end, you might even find you don't even like it. He goes that, but that's the risk of entrepreneurship that you take. So if you're not ready to take that, then don't try it. But I was in that mud for a long, long time. This is 2022. My checking account, $144. My savings account, um, twenty dollars. Okay, let me turn down the brightness. Twenty dollars. I just remember taking this, um, this screenshot and being like, "Bro, this is not forever." But this is <laughs> this is painful to see because this is the reality I'm working with, and mm -hmm. I have to pay rent in two weeks. <laughs> and I just remember being like, "Dude, I'm so screwed." But I'll figure out a way. And uh, the goal is to stack. And I, I wish um, I had learned this before because I totally could have just gotten a restaurant job a couple times a week and made some money. But I was just convinced that I have to figure this out in a different way. And um, this this cycle, I've just learned that like, dude, cash flow is so unbelievably slept on. Like, there are so <laughs> many opportunities for cash flow that you could have. There's so many side gigs you could pull that are independent. You know, DoorDashing style, Uber style. You could also just go yeah. work with human beings. There's nothing wrong with that. I think, um, at, at least in my journey, I I wanted to figure out a different way. But if I had known the 
the comfort that it that follows a little bit of cash flow each month, something consistent you can rely on. It allows you that extra bread that you can finally throw into some coins. And the mentality shift once you have uh once you're out of that mindset. Yeah. You can like finally breathe. Like I'm only 26 and like I'm able to now think about a future with actual realistic terms. I'm like, okay, I want to build up to this. I'm going to, you know, buy this, this vehicle. I want to like save up to this amount of money. I want to buy this much Bitcoin, whatever that uh, the idea is. Or if you start changing your mind about certain things, you're like, okay, it's not so much about buying a Lambo, but I want to have a family. So I got to be able to like have money to take care of this family and to take care of this wife and things like that. Like you can't really be in that mode until you're able to sack some money. And yeah. so, yeah, no, yeah, Red Pan, that's exactly where I was actually building to. So, like, basically, <laughs> the end of the show, I'm going to share with you specifically my seed phrase. I'm going to give you 20% of my net worth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well said, Kate. Well said. So, you know, it's 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 all about, you know, moving into the future and just kind of thinking about it. I, I guess that leading to my some of my next points, which is, you know, we, we know, okay, being in the market's great, right? And we know that, okay, maybe I shouldn't, uh, you know, lump sum everything. Maybe I'll dollar cost it. Maybe what I'll do. But, but the, really the, the question comes down to, okay, Rob, that's great. When do I sell? Because, mm -hmm. you know, I have been round. I mean, how many of us have round trip bags here? I'm going to guess most of you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so this is, this is something, this is why I have these rules. And these rules are very simple. And, and you, you, you can't say the first one. But it's all about leverage. Or leverage and, and what you could actually do. And what when you take a look at this, hold on. What oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're good. Kate. <laughs> you're good. So it's all about thinking about what you can actually overcome. So the very first rule is it's all gone, meaning don't invest more than you can afford to lose. It's very simple, right? Yeah. Next one is everything's a scam until period otherwise. Next one is don't leave things on exchanges. Obviously, we've learned our lesson from what we're supposed to learn from Mount Gox. Then it went to Voyager and Celsius and FTX and BlockFi. Now here we are. Don't use leverage. Eh, a little bit's okay, I guess. A little, little sneak in there. But the last one is take profits. And take profits is, I think, the most important one, the ones that people don't actually talk about. So let's talk about it real quick. So first of all, there's been a lot of uh, chatter on rate cuts. And we can see that if we think what's going to happen with the Fed on September, I think it's September 18th when they have their meeting, it looks like they're going to cut rates about 25 basis points. Right now, the current target is between 525 and 550, right? So we're looking at, you know, back down to five and a quarter, 500 to 525, 5%, 5.25. Maybe they do uh, two rate cuts. And there's been some talk about, we'll just take a look at the rate cuts and take a look at the money supply because the, the theory going around is this. As the Fed starts to cut rates, then they start to turn the money printer back on, right? So it's an inversion. So, okay, we cut rates. Let's stimulate the economy as well. Let's start printing out money. That's what America does. And then as things get overheated, they say, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. we need to raise rates now. And now we got to stop with this M2 money supply and actually mm -hmm. hold back and turn the printers on. So quantitative easing goes to quantitative tightening. And it, people will say, well, just, do, just watch that. That should be it. Not so fast. So this actually worked out recently. This is, again, stealing information from Ben's website. This will be a little bit, I'll, I'll make sense. This will make sense in a second. There's three lines you're looking at. In this blue line here is the Fed funds rate, the interest rates. And you can see that since 2019, we come across here, the funds rate was, you know, the effective rate is always in between like 225, 250. It's a 2.4, comes around here. And then around 2020, it fell off the face of the planet because of coronavirus. And people say, okay, well, it, it dropped off. They cut rates. What's this in red? This is the M2 money supply. So when you have money supply, the printer goes on, right? Inversion. It makes sense totally. And then if we take a look at the total market cap for crypto, we can see that actually as this money supply goes up, it does well. I mean, initially it drops off, but money supply goes up. Federal funds rates, mm -hmm. they stagnant. Wow. And then when they start to raise rates, it should be the exact opposite, right? They raise rates and the M2 money supply goes down. Wow. And what, yeah, what happens? Cool. Yeah. Well, wait, wait. It, 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 gets, it gets worse. So, oh. when, so when, <laughs> when, when it comes down, the market starts to collapse, right? As, it, as well it should because there's not enough liquidity. 
So some people will take a look at that and go, 2020, boom, got it. Easy peasy, right? That's all I got to do. So let's go back because it's not just about, because the crypto market, I mean, Bitcoin was the first, 2009, right? And then, of course, it had all different altcoins or whatever. I want to go all the way back to 1960. What do you notice here? This red line is the M2 money supply. The M2 money supply doesn't care about your Fed funds rate. <laughs> America doesn't care about this. All it does is let's just keep firing those printers. Now it becomes stagnant here around 94. I, yeah, good point, right? But what mm. is it? it's been since 1960, all it's been doing is going up. And that's wow. and, and the Fed fund rate, it gets cut. So it gets cut, right? Fed funds rate, or the M2 goes up, but then the rates increase. So the M2 money supply should decrease. No, that's not what we do here in America. We, 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 we're great at two things, obesity and money printing. Besides that, let's overlay the price. Let's over, and, and you can see, obviously, right? Wow. It, there, there's something to be said about it a little bit. But if we see the, the M2 money supply, it just keeps going up. And then even like over here, we can see the, see, see the rates going up mm. in 1979. Market still went up. They don't care. So I know when people look at this, like, oh, it's so easy. I'll just do this and this and this. I'm just telling you, that's not the case. And then if we, let me see, if we zoom in here, let me get rid of this interest rate. You'll notice in 2022, we actually, this is like the first time in forever, we've actually decreased the money supply, quantitative tightening. Mm. And now we went up just a little bit. And you can see that the S&P 500, I mean, we're hitting almost all time highs. Yeah. So really, if you wanna look at something, look at M2 money supply, that's an important thing. Let me, I'll finish up with this, Cave, and I'll, I'll get your, your um, impressions. I did a video, it's certain indicators. I think you should look at M2 money supply, you should look at Fed funds rate, you should look at unemployment, you should look at initial claims, all that macro grade stuff, right? But I did a video and I talked about these eight or nine indicators, and it's free, there's a link in the description, it's on every single one of my videos. And I just talk about stuff like the pull multiple, MVRV Z score, Pi cycle top, Fear and greed index, also some macro things, also some, some time and risk bands. And also there's one that I just discovered on Ben's site. It's taking all these indicators and mashing them up into one big ass summary. So look at this, wow. November 2021, look at how overheated we were. And I didn't know this existed, damn it. I wasn't even really talking to Ben at that point. But you can see that right now, where are we at? It's Ooh. looking like pretty recent time, but we can go back and forth. Let's see, here's 2021. How about mm. 27? Yeah, that was about the same time. Jeez. And now this was October, 2019, we should talk about that. And then 2022, where were we? Not too bad. Or, oh, damn it, really? This would be the, the time to do it. Anyhow, kid, kid, what do you got for this? That was a lot of things to digest, everybody. I'm sorry, but uh, what do you think <laughs> about all that? Well, well, two things. A, you're a great teacher at, at this stuff. Like, uh, you, you explain it in a way that makes a lot of sense for, I feel like, the average person. Maybe is overloaded with the amount of terms that may be involved, but yeah. you give hope a little bit with uh, with the way you explain it. So you're, you're an excellent teacher. And then, uh, dude, shout out to Ben for just providing everything. Like, A, he throws a great party. Um, but B, oh, yeah. the, the guy, like, he, he's that guy. He's, he's definitely someone uh, that I, I would encourage people to, to, to check out, especially when, when markets are doing a whole lot of choppy. It's, he's a, um, both your channels are, are really, really helpful for that kind of, um, for that kind of situation, um, especially for beginners. But uh, I would say, man, that's a lot of things to, to keep up with, I guess. But you're right. Like, some of those indicators are really, really helpful on his channel. I, I have been curious on, on the, uh, the, the different tools that he offers on his site. But, man, that is a very, very interesting couple tools there and following those charts um it, it gets you kind of questioning i feel like for maybe it's all the red pill content on x that i keep seeing but it does get yeah. you questioning like okay do the do the things that happen in the world affect these markets or do the do the markets affect the things that happen in this world and like what direction are they going to go what direction do they go from here i feel like the world has gotten increasingly more dystopian is that bullish for the us dollars i bullish for for the uh, for bitcoin i think it kind of kind of comes back to your your concepts of uh DCing and just choosing to be diversified across across markets like i have uh holdings in the s p 
uh, and a couple different ETFs and stuff like that. Those are more long term plays. I'm just stacking. Um, and so like that, yeah, that's probably like the main plays I'm in. But I think you're right. Like I had a friend who said, just go all in on Bitcoin. He was like, if you understand it, like, why not? And I was like, well, I do. But I'm also not naive thinking that there's like something that could happen that could just like derail us for a little while. I don't want to be 80 percent of my net worth into Bitcoin um, when it's still a risk asset. Um, but man, that was a lot of things. I also saw a comment up here um, from this is a little while ago, it was like 10 minutes ago or something like that from Matanya Holmes saying, Kate, is Sydney still alive? She is alive. This is someone from the NFT market that I was uh, did a lot of content with and stuff like that back in the day. She's still alive. She's not doing as much NFT stuff. She's still crushing the artwork and uh, all that stuff. But uh, I don't think she's as much into NFT land. We'll see if we can get her back with all these prices. I'll send some screenshots of Bitcoin. Sweet. NFTs. So well said. I got to tell you, kid, I wish I was in your position when I was that at 26 years old. I was in the army. I didn't really know what was really going on. I just was trying to like make it. If I could be where you're at in 26, I, I think a lot of people would like to rewind the time and have that information. So we envy hey, you, Kate. We envy well, I was going to say, we, you have pe we have people like you guys who are helping us out. So so uh, and a big shout out to you and to other people who are putting out the content, especially the educational stuff that's not so shilly. Um, you're not going to find a lot of that in crypto. So when you find them, subscribe to them, like subscribe to, to Rob. If you're not, I can't imagine you're not, if you're watching this, the live stream, but definitely, definitely follow and subscribe to Rob's stuff. Cause he's putting out content very regularly I, as a content creator myself. It's a thousand times harder than it looks to just throw on a stream real quick. Like there's like a 50 tabs on his screen right now that requires a little bit of due diligence and research and prep. And uh, it, it's a lot of work. Thank you. Kate. And well, it gets easier as time goes on. So, sure. Okay, well said, man. I think we we got to get in the Q and I think people got questions for us. We should answer those to the best of our abilities, and then and then get out of here.